if, if to kind of switch gears, if you were to please have, have the ability <laughs> to play one character, and you know it was your your choice, you like your call. Is there any one character you would love to play? I don't have a character from like a real life person or anything. I'm not sure if that's what you meant. Probably not. No, just, but no. that's definitely. I don't. I don't have one of those. In fact, I find that very daunting. Like mm -hmm. if I were to like all of a sudden be cast as Ozzy Osbourne, I'd be like, no, <laughs> everybody's gonna crucify me. Um, although that'd be pretty dope. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, but I. I mean, to be honest, like I don't have I don't have a be all and end all. No, you know, I'm kind of if anything, I'm just drawn to multi layered characters that have stuff going on beneath the surface that have, uh, you know, that are outliers often. You know, I love those outlier characters where you don't quite know what they're going to do next and they have insane inner life going on that you can see and doesn't quite make sense until you see what they do you know slightly insular but you know i'm i i like a challenge too you know i never thought i'd book something like um captain quinn on blue mm. book i never thought i'd play an air force dude i mean look at me you know but somehow they saw something that was very rigid mm -hmm. <laughs> no not rigid but you know you, you don't know what someone's gonna see and in fact you often don't see that thing in yourself i mean there was a time also I got cast as Elvis. I was playing Elvis in the West End for an entire year. I had no clue that anybody would see that in me, you know? I mean, I was initially going up for Johnny Cash in that show. I was like, I'm Johnny Cash, man. I'm not fucking mm -hmm. Elvis. But they were like, you're Elvis, dude. And so <laughs> uh, you just don't know. And I, I, love, I love a challenge. I love being thrown something that I don't think I can do especially something I don't think I can do and um, surprising myself and really having to work for it. Um, I don't have an interest in, in playing stuff that's like, like I recently got sent a tape for a, a project that was actually really good script, but the character was just very much a jock, um, mm. very much thinking with his prick and, you know, talking about Pamela Anderson and all this stuff. And I was just like, I, I just can't do it. I can't do that. I can't dumb myself down for a, a long period of time. Like if I was doing a cool side role where I'm playing a certain character like that, hell yeah, I'll do that. Be like, yo, bro. <laughs> but if you're doing it in the long game, that's, that's a tough thing to do, you know, but usually I won't say no to stuff. I'll give it a go. But that was one of the times where I was like, I, I just can't. I can't do this. I don't want to do it, I suppose, was the point. No, but no, I'm open, a, man. I don't, I don't have... There'd be a psychic toll playing for. that to playing, to playing something that you're antithetical to. I, I would think there would be like a psychic toll to playing something mm. like that. Yeah, well, like you I know. said, you know, you were affected by your characters, right? I mean, there was... Uh, at one point, I got a straight offer to play Charles Manson in a... Uh, in a movie straight offer i didn't even have to audition for it first of all that was very concerning initially i was like <laughs> uh okay do i come across like some crazy ass <laughs> murderous <laughs> oh it's because i'm a musician right okay fair enough we'll go that way anyway i started doing all the research for it I, anyway i had a conflict i couldn't do the project but in doing the research and this is also like what I said, that you, you end up empathizing with your characters, right? You have to find a way to make quote unquote villains, heroes in your own mind. You know, very few people are doing things strictly out of villainy. There's yeah. usually some kind of reason, however twisted, that they're doing the shit they do. Um, and so I kind of started reading all this stuff i started kind of rewiring what i felt about him and you start justifying these things in your head and i can understand how it can be playing with fire like kind of playing with fire a little bit you know like if you get too far down that where do you end up afterwards you know if you how, how are you affected in the long run you know and i i i don't know i mean i i think it's also why someone like daniel day lewis who goes like pure method 
would would only do a film every once in a while because he'd take a long time to really let go of whatever strange baggage he's collected during that process. And I think a lot of actors, especially method ones, I'm not method. I don't have time for that shit, but uh, mm-hmm. ha- have have difficulty with that stuff, you know, letting those things go. But, well, that least stress. Yeah, I just I come problems. from the the. I come from the British British school of of drama. Say the lines, mean them, and fuck off. <laughs> Which uh, you know, I think a lot of American actors could take note. <laughs> Say the lines and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, if there's any, uh, if there were any dream project you could do musically, like be it a a, a festival show, an album, is there anything that you've kind of like always wanted to sink your teeth into musically that you haven't gotten to do yet? To be honest, I would just love to be on some of these fests. It would be killer to just be able to play something like, I, I can't even think of all their names, but like Crazy Fest, I don't know if that still exists, or Hell Fest, or th- some of those Hell big fest. fests that used to, uh, I used to idolize a lot of the groups on it. I mean, if 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 I ever got a spot on, on one of them, that would be pretty awesome. That'd be a moment, you know. Um, I'm also working with another group it's more of a, a post doom metal group, and this has been a, a, an interesting one. And I, it's not been really publicized yet, so I'm not going to say anything too much about it. But they play right. in like eleven eight time signatures, and uh, you know, there's no choruses really. It's it's very much progressive, uh, very neurosis sounding actually. Yeah. There's a lot of neurosis influence, um, but this was another project I did um, remotely. You know, I, I did all the demos here and we just cut the record. So we're mixing it right now. And um, it, it was a, it was a real moment for me, I suppose, because it's something I didn't think I could do was work with time signatures like that or that kind of style. And, and it's something that I listen to a lot. And so I've always had that. I've always had that passion to do music like that. But you know, I, I approached it in a way where it's a little different from other stuff in the genre. There's elements of like maybe more of an Alice in Chains style singing, a little little Chino kind of vibe, but but also neurosis and that kind of thing. It's a, a real mashup, and I think it's something unique that uh, maybe doesn't really exist in the in the genre yet. Maybe. So watch this space. There will be more on on that project at, at some point. Um, once we finish it up no. i just i can't help myself man if something if something comes my way i embrace it i give it a go if it works it works and the thing about that one is like every every single time we record um i was working on one of the demos there came a point where i was like i can't do this i can't find a way in i can't figure out where the one chord is i don't know what's happening and i was <laughs> drafting an email to the guys saying like i just i can't do that and then i was like nah nah fuck that get back in there give it another shot and I surprised myself, you know, so I just like being challenged, you know, I like trying new stuff. Like you, you really are. That's so prolific, though. I mean, to have that many irons in the fire, uh, that's got to be rewarding. I mean, I, I, I have two musical projects that I'm involved in and, you know, they always end up taking a back seat to whatever is right in front of my face, be it my, my kids yeah. or, or work or this, that, or the other thing. I mean, I still have my passions for them, but I got to take my shots sporadically, you know, like you, to have the ability to just attack these things as they come. I, I, th- I think that's where, you know, you could really creatively blossom. Uh, and that takes time and commitment. So I applaud that yeah. because I, I well, wish thanks. I had. I mean, it's also <laughs> probably a little bit quick, quixotic, you know. I mean, uh, Don Quixote running at the windmills, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I just uh, who knows. I mean, uh, it, it, it's also going to be confusing for people too, you know. Like, who who is this dude? But I don't really care. It's like you you, you got to follow what what's interesting you at the time and just run with it, you know. Um, at least that's how I've lived up until now. You know, it's it's just trusting my gut rolling with stuff when it when it presents itself i believed in serendipity to a certain degree you know when some stars align something happens 
you know, embrace that spark. Fucking just, just jump in, see what happens, you know? And, um, you know, I'm very famous for not forward planning too much, but, um, <laughs> and maybe that'll get me in trouble in this, in these instances, because I'm putting too much on my plates, you know, but who knows? I guess you cross that bridge when you come to it, you know? I think you just have to be willing to jump in. I think that's 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 the secret yeah. to all of it, you know? Just saying fuck it and going. I'm surprised you haven't written a book yet. I mean, what, like, what else haven't you done? I mean, I'm surprised there isn't a book out there at this point. <laughs> Kids, bro. I think a book, <laughs> you know, I'd really need a, a retreat to be able to write a book and it is something i've i've had an interest in doing at some point maybe i mean i've written a script so i've i've at least dabbled in in writing to that degree um but uh yeah maybe one day maybe one day but i think the kids got to be a little more grown yeah to, to be able to justify that i, I i've called together like i need i need quiet I'd need mm -hmm. some quiet for that. I wouldn't be able to kind of come and go. I'd need to get on the train, wake up, coffee, writing time, tune out, be able to kind of have at least a, a certain time period where I can get into a routine, I think, you know, for that kind of focus. You know. My wife always asks me, where's the novel? Where's the novel? I, I used to be a very <laughs> prolific writer. And it's like, well, why don't you ask our three-year-old where the novel is? <laughs> <laughs> he ate it. it it's all in here it just has to go to here and i don't have enough space or quiet to do so you know i i, I think yeah yeah i guess music you can get away with that more but not the written word but i'm no I'm yeah well i mean for music you know i could sorry yeah i could jump in here you know say hey i'm, I'm taking a an hour i'm gonna like box myself in and just work 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 and if something's like really hitting and you know you know when it's gonna be a rewarding profitable session or not you know pretty pretty soon on like after half an hour working you're like okay today's a bust and you can just mm -hmm. feel it you know the sparks just the synapses aren't connecting it's just not working um but then if you really catch on to that spark you can tell when it's really things are blossoming, things are happening, your brain is totally switched on in that zone. That's when I'll make some sacrifices, get in a little <laughs> trouble and be like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone, you know, and my, my wife, bless her, has, has recognized those moments. I still get um, a, a, a justified chastisement in some <laughs> of those instances, but like it's, it comes with the territory, you know, and it's 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 rare you actually have the time so you do have to carve it out when you when you have have kids and you know my first priority right now is is being dad and i've 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 really um committed to um certain sacrifices as as far as that goes um and and i'm happy to do it you know and i think I, it was a very begrudging thing for a while you know it was like god if i only had you know time to work in this record it'd be blah 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 you know but yeah. I, f I feel like it's just you got to roll with it and um what what you're giving the kids by being present and not wishing you were someone else is is going to set them up for how they feel about um how they feel in their relationships and how they befriend other people i mean it's like these subterranean lessons that it's it's not about what you say it's what you do you know, and it's, yeah. it's about how you behave and it's about how you react to pressure and, and how you deal with needing to do something and having to table it, move on to something else. And they watch this shit. And yeah. if they're not watching it, they feel it and they sense it, you know. Um, and that's that's an ongoing lesson, isn't it, brother? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, you get constantly <laughs> learning that, wow, OK, you really picked up on what I did there and I need to maybe think about how I can do that differently next time. Cause it's really about how you react. They it's, 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 if you can kind of learn to, um, monitor your reactions to things and not go with your first knee jerk animal brain response, then you have the power to, well, to heal generational trauma, I suppose, yeah. you know, because these things are, are so deeply ingrained 
we don't even know we do them. We think they're just so much a part of who we are. Like, I can't help the way I react. You piss me off, motherfucker. You know, yeah. but it, it's like, well, yes, you can actually. You could stop. And all you got to do is take a breath. You take one breath. And then you can kind of gauge how you want to respond as opposed to how your animal body, its impetus is to respond. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because but we're getting heavy again. No, but that's normally what we do on here. And the fact of the matter is, is oh, I good. As, as men, a lot of us carry a, a, a somewhat of a generational trauma, regardless of what your upbringing was, because it, it's totally. ingrained, ingrained in the masculine like ethos to be, you know, this, this uber tough provider, this, you have to live up to the expectation of being a man. You got to be a man. Don't cry. Don't you don't show mm -hmm. emotion, you know? And there's that, you know, that aspect of, of, of toxicity that I really didn't want my son to inherit. You know, I inherited totally. it from my soldier father who inherited it from his soldier father and with this guy, I don't want him to see me even like speak in anger, no, no matter what the words are, no matter how it comes to pass. And that's difficult to check. So you do have yeah. to take that beat. And I'm actually learning lessons. I'm via te what I'm teaching him because he'll have a meltdown yes. and I'll just, I'll just look him in the eye. And if you feel so mad that you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. And then I, I count the four, nice. and he, it diffuses him completely. In doing so, I, I, I've learned how to diffuse myself with a, a, a child's rhyme. At yeah, forty, yeah. almost forty-six years old, I'm finally really figuring out how to be a complete person. <laughs> there are there are teachers, man, and I think um, it's it's hard not to feel emotional about it because it's so. I mean, it's so yin and yang love and pain you know and it's like there's just so much weight to this stuff and um but they are our teachers it's um the amount of stuff i've learned from him really outweighs almost anything that i learned beforehand because you're literally forced to look in the mirror every day mm -hmm. something that i fled from for a long time you know um but that's beautiful you know and we we have to learn they're 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 closer to to the divine than we are you know they've been yeah. there more recently than we have so there's a purity there um that we can all learn from it, it lets you know too that the the actual baser instincts of of these tiny humans is not warlike it doesn't discern between whether or not they like someone they just greet everyone with oh you're being nice to me okay i like you you know, there's there's just something very pure and and essential about that. That mm. if I could find a way to somehow get back to that, perhaps I wouldn't have all of the anxiety and depression and addiction issues that I've struggled with for almost forty six years. Yeah. Uh, because it would it would be nonsense. It'd be noise. It'd be white noise in the background, peripheral. Because yeah. the one goal would just be to tap into that ethereal, essential beauty that children yeah, are born with and it gets not yeah out and i think them. it's because also we have such a ingrained uh classification judgment system um that we immediately put on everyone around us you know even if we have gotten over a lot of that there's it's it's still there you know mm -hmm. because we we're brought up learning that shit. but you're right they don't really have that it's like it's more of a uh, a, a spiritual classification like oh this is a nice person this is a mean person you know mm -hmm. that's it's interesting i hadn't really thought of it like that well i mean it's if, if you were to look at small children playing with one another you know if they hadn't been poisoned by their parents bigotries yet mm -hmm. if they see one another with different genders different skin tones that none of that matters right they just if you're no. nice to me they're just I'll... curious about it they're yeah. curious about it, you know, and um, yeah, it's it's it, that's the thing. Like, I remember when, uh, well, 
I don't want to talk really too much about my family, but there, there was a moment where my son was like saying, you know, that, that black man over there, blah, blah, blah. And there was a part of me that was like, oh, don't don't say it too loud, you know? You're, right. But it's like, hang on, he's, he's just seeing what he sees. And it's like, why is that even a wrong thing, you know? And it was one of the first times I kind of had to really, um, like, where where do you talk about these things and how? with the kids you know it's 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 a tough one because you know this stuff is going to come up and it's 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 really difficult i mean it's not something i really want to get too far into because i'm really kind of trying to meditate on it at, at the moment you know like how do you well, if really I give confront you, these issues i could give you some really good insight because my wife yeah. is black i'm white our yeah. son is mixed he, he so yeah his there, there had to be an inherent confusion in there somewhere. You would think, but, but, but there wasn't. He was just, oh, mommy's, mommy's dark, daddy's light. I'm in the mm -hmm. middle somewhere. You know, he's only three, so he, he only has a very basic idea of, of the scope of it all. But I mean, it's, it's already his reality. So for him to say, mommy's black, it's like, well, you, you, yeah, she is. You're white, mm -hmm. dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's what it is, baby. That's it. But and, so much more, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have so many colors, but there's a... Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there, it's easy to program kids with the right thing, too. If you just mm. allow them to go kind of with what they're already kind of naturally wanting to do. They just mm. want to understand. They want to know what that feels like and what this feels like and, you know why your eyes blue and moms are dark and you, if you just allow them to kind of reckon with it on their own and push them lovingly in the general direction of the right thing it all comes out in the wash yeah well there's also i mean th this is a big reason why I, I wanted um to 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 be back in atlanta you know and um to go to certain schools here where where you know my son was was going to be more of a minority you know and more of a, a very very multicultural um, situation you know because i want that to be the norm and that's what i had when i grew up and it's why i have a lot of the perspectives i have i grew up in a community that was you know very uh, uh multicultural but also like you know there was a whole um lgbtq community there and it was just something that was like you know i had friends with two moms and it wasn't like weird at all it was just like normal and and i just like i really want that because when you when you grow up in that it's just it just you just accept everybody for who they are and um, i got that for free but not everybody does you know it yeah. takes a long time for some people in certain communities to arrive at that um truth that we're all equal you know, there's just a lot of misconceptions and um, bad intel about certain yeah. communities, you know, that people just take on board and think is is tr the truth, you know. But um, I'm grateful for that, um, at least.